This is Natural Powerlifting Radio. Deadlifts, chicken nuggets, video games. This is Check My Total, a powerlifting podcast with Timothy Payne and Andrew Henson. Ladies and gentlemen, happy Memorial Day to you. That's when we're recording this thing. It's a memorial. And welcome to another episode of the Check My Total podcast. And this episode is just a duo on, and we're going to be kind of talking about uh, mental strategies and how you can mentally prepare yourself and make the weight lighter. You're going to be lifting with your mind. Telekinesis, Alakazam. We're going to be X-Men today. That's right. But man, I don't think I've ever been this tired in a long time. I was 20, 20 hours on the road. I uh, just got back from Missouri. Uh, came from a wedding. Uh, it was fun, but I'm telling you. How did you mentally prepare for that for that drive? Uh, lots, uh, lots of uh, caffeine. <laughs> I, I, it, was, it was such a long drive, and this wedding venue was in the middle of nowhere. How long were you on the road, like? How far was it from your house? Uh, it was nine hours uh, from yes. the house. That's getting uh, it pretty good. I think round trip was about 20 hours. Probably spent maybe a little bit more, but something like that. Um, I guess you probably stopped once to go eat or something. Yeah, stopped, at, stopped in Fayetteville, Arkansas at the Whataburger. I saw like that. that. I'm telling you. We don't have those here in Alabama. Well, there's one in Birmingham, and but that's the closest one. But that's a tech. It's a Texas chain. I've uh, never been to one. Oh, you have to go to one. It's worth traveling to. Like, it, they have the uh, their burgers are just so good. Becca really liked them too. Um, so I saw on your Instagram where you took a picture holding a flag with an employee. Walked in, me and Noah and Becca walked in to Whataburger in Fayetteville, and there was a dude at the cashier just wearing a cape. He was wearing, he tied it around his neck and he was wearing a cape. And Noah, Noah's big on Whataburger because he did an internship in Dallas. Ah. So he, he, he knows all about it. And so, and I've been to one in Birmingham before a long time ago. And so, I was like, we got to go. We're this close. It, it's worth traveling a little bit out of the way for. Right. Um, so we went to it. It's like 11 o'clock at night, I want to say. 10.30, 11 o'clock at night. Um, and man, because uh, it's 24-7. Um, so, so is it like a steak and shake? No, 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 no. It's. I'm trying to think of the most similar thing. It. Think of it like a Five Guys. Yeah. But more variety, like and I don't really know what to compare it to. It, it it's like your, it's just a burger joint, but they have some chicken sandwiches and chicken wraps. Um, okay. But the burgers are where it's at, and their fries are really good. And what's really cool is when you order, they bring you this uh, condiment tray, and you get to choose what condiments you want. And they have their own sauce called the, uh, they call it spicy ketchup. And man, it is on the money. Uh, it's hard to explain what it tastes like. Um, it you, you get a little barbecuey taste and like a little hot, like spice taste. But it's still, that's still, I guess ketchup. Yeah, it's a real good. That's a real good sauce. Um, and yeah, it, it's extremely tender meat and like it's a really good burger. Like honestly. I think I think it's better than Five Guys. Okay. Um, I, th- I think it is, um, and it's cheaper. Well, anyways, you walk in, your man's wearing the Waterburger cape. Yeah, he's wearing the Waterburger cape, Just... and I was like, man, I don't ever come to Waterburger. I'm like a, uh, this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity. I was like, I'm gonna go get me a picture with this employee, and I, I go up to him, and I said, I need your, I want your picture, man. And he unties his cape, and then we just hold it out there because it says "What a guy," and it's got the little W logo on it. And he was pretty cool about it. And uh, 
He was happy to take a picture. We, we snapped a picture. It was probably one of my favorite moments on the trip. That's awesome. He's like, man, I got to be in here until 7 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, it was it was fantastic. Great time. Highly recommend a Whataburger if you have one in your area. Yeah, I'd like to go try one. We might have to go to Birmingham one day. Yeah, it's, I think it's worth the drive. Um, now, it's, I talked to one of my buddies who's had in and out and he he thinks in and out is better. A lot of people do like in and out But I have other people that say Whataburger is better. So I don't I don't know. I've never had in and out so I don't know. But that's... I think the closest in and out is in Texas. I don't know. I think it's in Texas. I've never mm-hmm. been to one of those either. Yeah, me either. Hopefully one day I will. Maybe I'll make a road trip out of it just to go eat it. Yep. So mm. now that we've spent five minutes on Whataburger, <laughs> let's get into this podcast. All right. Mentally preparing yourself. I had to mentally prepare myself to this morning for jujitsu. Yeah. So how do we want to tackle this? Are we talking about getting prepared for a workout, prepared for a meet? Uh, let's do, let's, let's prepare for a meet. Um, I think, because I mean, I really, you can just pretty much apply this to your workout as well. Um, so, when we talk about um, the mental attitude or some mental strategies to use to go in for a successful meet, um, what we're talking about is visual, like, you want to visualize your lifting and the and the weight on the bar and for whatever lift it is, squat, bench, deadlift, and you want to kind of visualize yourself going through it. Um, and so, the to kind of kick this thing off is I think this is what I do at least for meets, and this is what I did in my last meet. I start about. Three, two to three weeks out from the competition, and you start picking your openers and your second attempts and your third attempts, and you start visualizing yourself lifting and performing those lifts uh, multiple times a day for about two to three weeks. Yeah. Um, and uh, when I visualize, it's not always easy either. Like if I'm trying to rep. Oh, yeah. Even, even in my brain, that rep's going to be hard. I guess it's just to prepare myself in case it is hard. That, Like I know that it's going to feel this way. Yeah. Because uh, I know when you talk about visualization, you know, people always talk about, you know, thinking about it being easy and you winning and, yeah. you know, the bar being light and everything else. I don't, I don't know. I think it's good to have some of that, maybe for your opener or something, pitcher smoking it. But once you get to your second and third attempt, I think it's I think it's a good thing to picture it being hard, just so you know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah. Uh, one of the biggest takeaways from Jason Cravey back in the day was he, he was really big into mentally visualizing your stuff, uh, whether it was a workout lift or a competition lift or whatever, but... Uh, some of the some of the advice he gave me, and I still use it, is to visualize yourself doing the lifts in first person, and visualize yourself doing them in third person. Yes. So uh, that, I've used that before. And another thing is, when I say visualize, I don't mean like like you know just think about yourself doing it. I mean set set aside some time and like actually like try to meditate on your lifts and like like just sit in a room and close your eyes and think about the lifts and like do do like the monk meditation thing and well, like it's almost like you're watching a movie inside your brain yeah like watching a movie or playing a video game you know first person talking about getting ready for these lifts i'll start visual visualizing you know sitting on deck yeah so it's not even you know, as soon as the movie turns on, we can call it, you're already under the bar. It's like, no, I'm sitting on deck, I'm getting up, I'm putting my chalk on, I'm watching the people load the plates, you know, waiting for my music to hit, 
if you're going to Iron Boy. Yeah. Um, like, I visualize way back, and you, you can go as far back as you want to, but I think it's good to just be prepared for anything. Like, you can, even during your visualization, you know, you can visualize maybe the platform's taking a little bit longer than you expected, and oops, you got your knee wraps on while your leg's starting to fall asleep. Yeah. Like, there's there's all kinds of scenarios you can go through before you even get on the platform physically. Exactly. Uh, your meditation should start early like that. Uh, and you should, you know, I think you should actually get in the zone. And it's actually kind of hard. If, you, if, you, if you're not used to meditating, it's actually hard to find somewhere quiet and to sit down and close your eyes and actually watch the movie and try it all the way through because you, you get distracted. Because, like, we're just not used to doing it. But one of the things is really zone in. Try and see if you can create the smells of the chalk, the pressures, the crowd. See if you can recreate that all in your head. And, you know, actually see if you can kind of feel the weight within your own mind. Like, feel how heavy it is. Be prepared for it. Uh, think about going down like on a squat and coming up think about it being tough and heavy in the walkout and it feeling kind of kind of rough on you and so you can kind of get that mindset but still i think it's good to picture some smooth i think it's good to visualize some smooth reps and i think it's good to visualize some a little funky reps things get a little out of line uh you don't want to visualize you don't want to memorize and like get into the pattern of always doing bad reps like your knee shoots out or like your hips get uneven because you don't actually want to do that. Right. But you do need to be prepared for if that happens and you do need to um, or, you know, if you do visualize yourself doing it perfectly over and over and over multiple times a week, you know, you might hit you might go to the platform and you might hit it perfectly. Yeah, that's true too. Um <laughs> I'm just too <laughs> real, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So I, I got a picture of being hard. So I do a, I try and get really into it, try and feel the sweat, and try and feel the weight on my back. And then I'll do a smooth rep, like I didn't really grind very hard. And then I'll do a, I'll visualize myself doing some slower grinding reps and kind of switch between them. And I'll do the same for the bench press. And I'll kind of do, I'll do my own setup, like, don't imagine something that you don't normally do. Like if you always put your left hand on the bar first and visualize all your left hand on the bar. Uh, uh, and then for squats, I, have, I haven't done this, but I wonder if you wrapped your knees in real life and then just sat there meditating as your knees lose circulation. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea. Uh, not, I don't know. I think it's good to maybe practice walking around in knee wraps. Uh, I mean, but that doesn't have anything to do with... Well, I guess it could do with your mental game. Just getting used to wearing a wrap. Walking yeah. around the house with wraps on and, you know, doing some squats every so often. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess you can sit there and meditate. Or yeah, I don't know. Practice getting in the zone. Yeah, I don't know. Never tried that, just sitting with knee wraps on. I have walked around in them. I think you should probably do that. But This is kind of a side tangent, but it probably is good to practice how long it takes you to put your wraps on. Like, whether it's you doing it yourself or you and a buddy. Oh, yeah. Just to figure out how far out you need to start wrapping your knees out of meat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. If it takes you three minutes to wrap, then that's some good information. You know not to do it too soon or too late. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you do all this preparation. So when you go to the actual competition, you've already done it, you know, a thousand times, 4,000 times, however many times you visualized it. And I think it's a way to help you not get as nervous, especially if it's your first competition, which yeah. even if it isn't heavyweight, it's still going to make you nervous. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't care who you are. I guess there's some freaks out there that you know, throw caution to the wind or whatever the saying is and don't care what happens. Yeah. But big weight should make you a little nervous, but if you've done it, like I said, a million times in your brain, it makes you a little less nervous. Yeah, it really does. And, uh, like, I, on the deadlift and stuff, um, 
you know, imagine all all the processes like pulling, like chalking your hands up, getting your grips, pulling it against your leg, and whatever your setup is, and imagine it all. Don't skip any steps in your memorization. I don't skip any, and uh, it should be pretty challenging. Like if you if you memorize and uh, try and kill all your distractions, and you try and imagine everything and get to like this extremely deep mental state you might even come out a little a little sweaty <laughs> might, yeah you, that's true might be a little focused you might get might even like a little sweat if you're thinking about all these things um so you've done all this meditation and everything to two or three weeks out but now you're at the actual meet so what's going through your head or how do you flip that switch before you're actually walking onto the platform how do you get in the zone? Um, me, it's more of like I've done it so much that it's just another another one. I don't actually I don't actually think that much. I don't really. I'm not really thinking of anything. It's pretty. It's pretty empty upstairs when I go up on that platform. It's pretty. It's pretty sparse. It's like a black void of nothingness. Yeah. And then I get on the bar, uh, where if it's a squat, I put my hands on it, and then the only thing I think in the squat is pull my shoulders back and put the bar where it always goes, and then let the rest follow. Like I don't know, not really thinking of much. I don't. I don't think I. I don't think I think of anything on the bench. So you don't more. really psych yourself up or nothing before you get under the bar. No, not really. Really? See, I'm I, I'm like the hype man. I gotta I gotta talk crap to myself in my brain and all kinds of stuff. I gotta get going. I don't know if that's just a tapping into like a adrenaline type of thing or I don't know. Still a line from Michael Belk, just trying to build some confidence. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just a a dummy. I'm just maybe dummy. It's... nothing going on. Like growing up being like a metalhead or something, I, I get that yeah. rage going. A uh, primal rage. Yeah, and like I said, with Iron Boy, we'll let you pick your own song. So I really try to tap in to whatever song's playing, and you know, I try to pick a song that hits fast because you know you're only on the platform for like 40 seconds. So if your song doesn't get to the hard, fast stuff in 40 seconds, you might as well not use it. Yeah. Um. I pay attention to the lyrics. It's just, I guess that's another like mechan coping is cope, whatever the word is. Coping mechanism. Coping. Yeah, I was trying to flip it. Coping mechanism to uh, not think about how heavy the bar is going to be or anything. Just kind of just focus on that music and ride that wave. Yeah, I try to think about the weight on the bar. Um, I I actually wouldn't mind. If, you know, I had someone that actually picked all my attempts for me, that knew me very well. I got you. Yeah. I don't even really want to know the numbers on the bar. That's just kind of how how I am. Dad used to do that when I was little. Like, I'd have no clue what I was lifting until (laughs) the announcer announced it. Like the bar goes to ninety pounds or whatever it is. It's like, oh crap, I'm doing ninety pounds. That's right. I can't do this. Uh, but you know, <laughs> it wouldn't give you enough time to think about it, so you just go out there and lift it. But uh That was back in the what, ten year old day? Yeah. About way back then. I'll, and maybe that's another thing why it's easy for me to get on the platform is because I have been doing it since I was 10. Like, nothing really freaks me out. Yeah. Like, powerlifting competitions are like a second home. I don't know. Like, I feel so at ease being on the platform and running the platform and judging and whatever else. Yeah, it's a different... Oh, yeah, it's a different different thing when you're used to it. You're not too nervous. Yeah. But squat... As far as, you know, getting under heavy weight and stuff, that's always what makes me the most nervous or scared. Bench, you know, be second least nervous. And then deadlift, I just let it fly. Because it's the last lifts of the day. You can, you know, put the rest of your gas tank into it. 
Yep. I really don't do too much visualization, to be honest with you, as far as that deadlift goes. I just, you know, I stand in the corner. I, during meets, I make it a point to stand in front of the speaker, which is probably why I can't hear too good. <laughs> so I stand in front of the speaker and, you know, get that music flowing through me. I'll be talking crap to myself, you know. Yeah. People talk, say they talk junk to the bar. I'm not so much about that because that bar's that bar's not going to do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it's just there. It's just an object. I'm more or less, you know, talking stuff to myself like, you know, if you can't get this and you're just a punk kind of mess. Yeah. Maybe some, maybe some more colorful language than that, but <laughs> it's in my head, so it's okay. Uh, but yeah, it's... I don't know, it's real easy for me to flip a switch and get super competitive and super hyped up and, you know, just to flip it back off as soon as the lift's over. I've had no problem channeling into that. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's kind of it's kind of different for every person, you know. You got those crazy people that, like, go banging their head against the bar, man. That's some, that's some crazy stuff, man. Their head starts bleeding. I don't mind that kind of mess if it's real, but you can tell when people are just trying to put on a show. It's yeah. kind of like watching these UFC fighters and like their post-fight um, press conferences and stuff when they're talking crap to other fighters. You can tell if it's fake or not. Yeah. It's it's a lot of the same way, watching people go through their pre-lift routine. Now, yeah. Chip, Chip Martin, he's one of our elite lifters. He's 308s. He's, he's hit it raw and equipped. But anyways, he was... He kind of had that crazy man thing going about him. He'd yell and scream and stuff and get super hyped up. He uh, he always wanted people to slap him before he went onto the platform. And one time, <laughs> one time we were sitting in the back and he's on deck. You know, he's getting, he's he's turning it on. He's yelling. He's he's getting ready to go. You know, squat 800 pounds or whatever it is. And he turns to me and he yells at me to slap him, and I like freak out. Well, I don't freak out, but in my brain. So I give him like this sissy slap, and he just kind of gives me this look, and then turns to somebody else and asks them to slap him. But it was, it was pretty funny. <laughs> he can probably tell that story way better than I can, but yeah. You gotta give him that hard slap. That's what I'm saying, but a huge, you know, 380 yeah. pound jack dude. <laughs> it, was, it was a little scary. Slap me, boy! Yep. But, uh, uh I think another thing mentally is uh, I, I do some meditation where I'm very fatigued and worn out, especially if it's the deadlift and the bench press, because I know going into the squats, I'm pretty fresh. But bench and deadlifts, I try and try and think that I'm already fatigued and I'm not, I might not be 100%. So I visualize myself in that scenario too to kind of help prepare better prepare myself because there's really not much you can do with powerlifting as far as preparing for it i mean once your training's done and it's the week before meet you're kind of just sailing into it besides doing all this mental visualization you know if you play football or something you can constantly watch film or go over what your reads are or something if you're a quarterback or you know, yeah. there's stuff you can actually work on up until the time you're about to run out of the tunnel. Exactly. Right, it's all just mental, man. It's all mental. You got to zone in and be 100% prepared. Uh, it's a little different if you're, like, fighting or something. You, uh, you ever seen Little Giants football movie about the peewee kids that play football? I don't think so. Well, anyways, they <laughs> the the Oakland Raiders, you know, back when John Madden was still coaching and everything. Anyways, their bus breaks down or something in the town where these Pee Wee kids are, but they get off the bus and they start helping the kids while they're trying to fix the bus so they can go to their game or whatever. And one of the football players turns to one of the little kids and he goes, it's 80% physical and 60% mental. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it just made me think of. But Little Giants, I suggest it. Y'all should watch it. Hey. Get one of them watches. Becky the Icebox. 
and oh spike i want to get you to watch it one day real giants all right yep yeah i think i think when it comes to this you like it in my in my opinion it makes the weights and the day a lot easier like the more you visualize the lighter the weight is when you actually get to it um you can apply this to everyday training if you want. I don't because I ain't got time to be meditating on on work on regular old workouts. <laughs> like Yeah, but I might picture myself doing the rep like maybe before I actually get under the bar type of thing. Yeah. But definitely not, you know, sitting in my house <laughs> trying to picture it for a workout. Yeah, I don't really get into that. Um, no. So I mean, with powerlifting, you know, you generally take the week off before your competition. So, you know, you got at least one whole week of not going to the gym, or at least doing doing extremely minimal work in the gym. So, you you have a lot of time to mentally prepare yourself. Um, and I think if you spend that time mentally preparing yourself, I think there, I think there's something to be said for that. You know, there's a lot of you know. You got those crazy people that can go sit underneath a freezing waterfall, but they don't think it's cold at all because they just think it's, they just get into that state of mind. Yeah. They can sit on that rock forever. And it was like, it's like that in a lot of things, fighting, uh, uh, balance, um, you know, doing those doing whatever that thing is called where you lean against the wall and you like bend your knees wall sits or whatever yeah I always like doing those um yeah there's a lot of things you can do mentally to really up your game and you know get ahead of the competition and to improve yourself and to make the lifts easier uh so I think everyone should give it a try yeah and everything we talked about like Andrew said you can apply it to anything in your life not even weightlifting yeah it's amazing what you can trick your brain into thinking to get through stuff yeah I mean that's I want to take it even a step further I mean that's what shadow boxing is like you're imagining an opponent in front of you doing moves and you're reacting to them and I think that about wraps it up um you just have to go through every single process and think through every single detail. Uh, good, smooth reps. Really, just you're tired and the weight is just bearing down on you. And you're going down and you're coming up. You got smooth but still difficult. Really get into the zone. Smell the chalk. Smell the ammonia. Feel the weight. Feel the weight in your hands. Feel the tension on your shoulders. Feel it all. Get into a deep meditation state. Yeah. Let you miss rip. both your attempts, and you got to come back on your third one. That's right. Imagine it all, and imagine. Don't imagine too many bad things. Just try and focus and make it make it solid. Um, and yeah, I think that's about all all we got. Break it so, down. <clears throat> In this corner, we have the wimpy. Man, weighing in at 200 pounds, but a right-sized brain who ain't meditated in 20 years. On the lower side of the ring, weighing in at the same weight with a longer reach, but 10 years older and a little bit crippled, but a man who's got the strength and the mental fortitude to move mountains is approaching the pipsqueak in the ring. He's coming out with a telekinesis. He's bending the spoons. He's bending the legs. He's bending the bar. You can't stop this man. He's reading your mind, your every move. He knows what you're doing tomorrow for breakfast, for dinner, for lunch. Ladies and gentlemen, I know what you're doing tomorrow. You're watching some podcasts. See you on the next one. Ding, ding. We're out. Up next is the very first Iron Girl Powerlifting Championships. The all-female event will be held at CrossFit Bang Bang in Easley, South Carolina on June 8th. Come out to support all these strong ladies, and if you happen to be one yourself, sign up for the competition at ironboypowerlifting.com.
please subscribe and thank you for listening. Be sure to follow at CheckMyTotal on Instagram for all the latest updates.